is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of my exterior patio tile project. If you haven't seen part one, I'm going to drop that link below. So check that out before you watch this one. The first thing we did was prepped everything. We prepped the substrate by grinding down any previous paint and stain that was left on there. Clean that all up, did a little power washing, came back with um, some patching compound to level it out. Not really level it, but make it flat because the concrete was just very imperfect. Then we let that dry and we put Hydroban anti-fracture membrane, which is a roll-on, on top in two coats. So it's all dry and it's ready for tile. But before we just start laying down the tile, we want to do some prep work for the layout. And what we did first was put the profile on, so come check it out. You will get to see a uh, little time lapse that will overlap over what I'm talking about just now for the profile. Basically, all we did was um, made sure that the profile was overhanging just enough to accommodate for one full tile. So basically, we overhung the profile just enough to accommodate one full tile at the biggest side, which is the left side. So basically, we want to make sure that it's going to accommodate the tile and then there's some room for thickness, um, thin set here. And it gets more, or the overhang is more extravagant over here, which we will have to come back and build up. So the reason we did that was to have a nice straight line because this patio is kind of like cocked to the left a little bit or right, depending on which way you're looking at the house. And you don't want to run your pattern off of a side over here and use this as a straight line and come out to a finished edge, which is what you're going to see out here, and have your pattern like kind of look crooked because if it's a quarter inch difference from one side to the other, your tile cuts are going to grow a quarter inch. So what we're going to do is um, we're just set our profile in a straight line enough to accommodate the tile on the front, and we're going to tile from the front back for this job just to make it simple because there is a way we can like square it off and do all of that but we just want to keep it simple and I think that for anybody watching this especially if you're a beginner this would be the easiest way to combat a project like this you can template it and I do have a video on templating um, which I'll drop below as well it is for a shower pan but you can absolutely use that for this scenario I just don't have the materials to template so I'm um, improvising and using just a different method so we're going to tile from the profile back anyway so the next step would be to measure out everything to try to get your layout because this is a hex tile we can either run it so from the top to the bottom is about seven inches i'm not going to give you the exact measurement just to keep it simple from the top to the bottom is seven inches and then from point to point is nine so we're gonna use a 16th inch spacer. And we basically just figured out, we could either run it flat side against the, the door wall and then come to here, or we can run it point to point. So we figured out with math, it's going to be a nicer layout to run it with the longer side from the door to the curb and then with the shorter side from the short side to the short side. Um, basically, what you want to do is take your measurements left to right, top to bottom. You can do this in so many different ways, but basically we just grabbed a couple tiles to get a good visual and we laid them out like you see here. So once you get your top to bottom or front to back, you can figure out your left to right. So you can either do this by laying everything out in a separate location and making your four points and just making basically make your four points and then connect the dots or you can lay it out like this if you need a more visual which is sometimes i like to do it it just really all depends on the project and with this project because of the pattern i like to lay it out and just double check that way so top to bottom and then do the same with your left to right so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate here so that you can get a little bit of a feel of what i'm talking about Okay, so this is just a rough demonstration, but you can see that 
left to right. It almost fits, but we have some weird gap over there. It looks like it's half an inch over here. It's about a quarter of an inch. Since it, it's exterior, I wouldn't mind so much having a quarter inch for expansion on either side. I just think that there's a better way to do this to maybe get a smaller gap on the sides. Plus you wanna keep in mind that I have these bunny ears happening here on the ends. So like, it wouldn't be so bad if this was just a square porch that ended right here at this red line. But because it extends, you have to keep in mind that if you're coming off half an inch over here, when you go to set your next tile, that's going to be a pretty ugly looking corner right there. So we don't want that to happen. So basically, what do you do? Now you just shift your pattern left and right and it's called splitting the difference. If you've been following me for a while, you already know what I'm talking about. You want to, I'm going to shift this whole entire pattern to the left so that it's about half this tile, right? So that basically under there, I will have Now this isn't going to be perfect because my line's going to be all crooked and whatever. Usually you want to do this with a straight edge, but I'm just demonstrating here. So you want to try to get as equal pieces on the left and the right as possible. So like we're at three and three quarters. We're going to have to make it a little bigger. Okay, almost four. And this, and this side's running at five. So I know I can push it this way a little bit more. Again, you'd want to do this with a, with a straight edge so you have your lines, but um, so now you can see, let me get out of the way, that either side is almost, it's almost equal. So you'll have a nice even pattern. It will look symmetrical and you'll get closer to the wall on either side. So when you come around to do the corner over there, you won't have this big ugly gap that's visible. Additionally, if you can see how it looks coming out of the door, I like that it's like one, two, three, four full tiles almost going into the doorway there. So that is a much nicer pattern to me and a better way to balance it out. So split the difference um, and just always just take quick measurements before you start tiling because the worst thing that you can do is like end up with a tiny sliver in a spot like over here or by the door and like then you're just mad about the whole install or I would hate to have a different size on the left than the right. Um, again, this is a very heavy pattern tile so you might not even notice it that much but I just can't bring myself to install something without double checking. I just can't do it. So anyway, the next step would be to um, mark where we're going to lay our first row and we can either start like left to right or straight. And I think that what I'm gonna do is run a line and start, we'll square off a line here. And we're gonna start like from here and work our way out and then tile this side um, just so that we can have a nice square line and making sure that our pattern is staying straight. So that will be next. Okay, so once you have your layout picked, the next thing is to find a line to start from. You want to make sure that your line is straight and that you're square. So how are we going to do that? You want to throw up your laser or have a straight edge and you want to use a square like this. So since I am going to start tiling from the profile here because I want to make sure that this is straight, I already know that one side of the patio is bigger than the other. So if I started by following this back wall here, I'd be out like about a quarter inch and I'd have like a quarter inch different cuts from left to right. And I don't want that. I think that will look horrible. Um, so you throw up your laser to get your straight line, but now you want to make sure that it's square to your profile so that your pattern doesn't shift and drift. Throw your laser line up, make sure you're hitting your lines from setting up your um, pattern. Then you wanna grab your square and you wanna butt it up against your profile 
to get your line square to the profile so that your pattern's running straight off of the profile. So just to demonstrate so you can see, just to make sure that it's square. All right, so you put your square down just to make sure that your line is square to your profile and then make sure you give yourself marks of where you put your laser because if you do this over more than one day or you accidentally hit the laser, anything can happen. You wanna make sure that you're able to reset the laser in the same spot. So now, basically once you got that all squared away, you're good to set tile. I'm just gonna check for the coverage. I have been back buttering or burning in the thin set on the back, so we're using a quarter by quarter inch. It feels pretty good, so. Okay, so just a reminder, as I always say, make sure that you are following your standards and you are burning in your thin set to the substrate and the tile. You are using directional troweling, meaning you are troweling in one direction, both on the substrate and on the tile, if you were adding ridges to your tile. These are just key steps to follow. It's like tiling 101. It's extremely important to do that, to make sure you're getting proper coverage behind your tile. It is extremely even more important if you're setting tile outside, any place like a wet area or an exterior project, these steps are even, they become even more important. So make sure you're following that. It takes a little bit longer, but I promise it's worth it. Okay, so since yesterday we only got to do a few hours of work, we only got about half of the patio done. So, which is good, because now I can tell you what to do if you need to come back the next day and finish up a project. So, basically now we have all these spacers in the grout joints and there's like thin set, you know, just in areas that you're just unable to get while you're working. So it's best to clean up the thin set. See, I would recommend really, if you had the time, to let the thin set set up for like a good two hours and then come back and clean same day. But if you don't have that luxury, next day is good as well. It does take quite some time for the thin set to reach its max hardness. Um, so I'm going to go around, pull out all of these spacers and then clean out the grout joints. You could see there's like some thin set you know caked up so you have to really get that out and now we're working with a clay tile so this tile is soft um, so you have to be very careful i'm going to try to clean it up as much as i can with like bostic blaze and a scrub brush because i don't want to be going in the grout joints with anything hard or sharp because i will chip the tile it's a very soft tile so just keep that in mind if this was a porcelain it's much more durable you can scrape and scratch and it's less likely it will chip although it can happen but not as easy as one of these guys so that's what we're gonna do now so the first thing I'm doing is going over it with just a wet microfiber um, just has water on it I just want to get up anything that's like easy to get up with just the water so whatever your microfiber rag doesn't clean up, I mean, the microfiber rag could probably get up 90%, but like you're gonna be sitting there scrubbing, scrubbing. So you could use a night, like a scrubby pad. Um, the green ones from like the grocery store. Scotch, Scotch Yeah, Scotch Bright ones, these. These would work, but some tile and grout 
it will bleed into the grout. So you want to be careful. I like to grab the white ones. You can probably get these on Amazon or somewhere else online. Um, and just scrub any of the thin set that's on the surface. It comes off pretty easily. Again, this is just with water. I'm not using any chemicals. So every time we try to do this project, it starts raining and it's raining again. Didn't rain all day, wasn't on the forecast, but as soon as we start coming out here to work, rain. Well, Mother Nature is helping me clean the grout. I mean, clean the thin set, so. Now I want to use a brush because I want to try to get in between the joints, any caked up thin set before going around with a sharp knife because like I said, this is clay tile and it's very soft. So I don't want to risk chipping it. So I'm just going on an angle and just getting in the grout joints anywhere where I see that it's all built up. I don't know that this is working very well. might be no way to avoid it. Okay, so now that we've set all of the tiles in the middle where they're, we set all the full tiles as much as we can and we got to the ends where we were going to have some cuts. So we cut in a lot of the pieces, which is what we're going to set today. So that is all of this, which took some planning. And our plan for the front is to take this tile that we cut and pretty much make like a fake wrap so that all in the front, it looks like that. Basically, because we plan the layout like we did, we have equal cuts on the top and the bottom, so on the door side and on the side with the profile. It's about two and a quarter and two and a quarter, and then from left to right, we have half full, half full on either side. So the next step that we're going to do is um, finish cutting in the pieces. We still have a couple of pieces over there to set, to cut in and then on the sides, and then we're going to set the front and set all the side pieces. So that will be next. Okay, so another thing I wanted to mention is when you're getting your cuts for the riser, there's two ways that you can do it. You can flip it around and make your marks on either side and then flip it back around and use a square or straight edge to get your mark. Um, you also can just use the spacer on the floor and then use a stick measure or your tape to get either side. Because of this concrete slab here that's in front of the riser, it's kind of tilted this way. So our pieces are smaller here and they're bigger here. It's like running this way. Um, we have to measure for each one. It's not like we can just take one measurement and then run it across. We'll end up having a space that's growing or shrinking, all depending on how we did it. So we took a measurement for each piece individually and then cut them. Um, so you just have to kind of make, use your best judgment on which method is going to work best for you. I've done both, they both work great, so. All right, so we are using Laticrete Spectral Lock 1. This is a premixed grout, um, very similar to an epoxy based grout, but it is not quite epoxy. So, if you are unfamiliar with premixed grouts or 
epoxy grouts or urethane grouts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this is basically like one of the strongest grouts you can get on the market, and the benefit to it being pre-mixed is that the color and pigment is like a part of the grout. It's not added in like a cement-based grout or a, a grout that you actually mix in a bag. Um, that's why I like it and that's why I chose it for especially exterior projects like this. I use something similar in all of my projects, but if you're looking for a good grout that will hold up outside, you definitely want to use something like this. And tips for using it is working in small sections. Like I only did about three tiles. Before I put the grout on, I wet. So if you can, you know, you've been watching, you see that I'll wet the tiles first. Then I go and grout, I let it dry a little bit. And then I go back with a damp sponge and I'll just go in circular motions and take off all the surface grout. You don't want to press too hard or dig too deep. Um, you just kind of want to slide across the top of the grout joint so that you're not taking it out, taking the grout out of the joint and you're making sure that it stays nice and full. All right, so this wraps up our front porch install. If you haven't seen part one, I have linked that below. And if you wanna see some more finished photos, check out my Instagram. And if you don't follow me on there yet, go do that. I'm more active on there than I am here. So just to recap, we prepped the surface first. We, we used a grinder to grind the concrete. We had to screed it out to fix any low spots in the concrete trying to make it as flat as possible. We went over it with a anti-fracture membrane, the Laticrete Hydroband Roll-On. We let that dry and then we were ready to set tile. We set the edges using a Schluter profile and then we set with three 30 second spacers, which if you are not familiar, it's between a 16th and an eighth. And we did that because we're using handmade clay tiles from Clay Imports. And there's a slight variation. They say on their website, what level of variation the tile is. So you cannot expect to get perfect tiles as if this was a rectified porcelain, but that's okay. This is the look I'm going for. I think that it came out beautiful. We went over then with the Laticrete Spectralock 1 grout, which is kind of like, acts similar to an epoxy grout. If you aren't familiar with pre-mixed grout, you have to work in small sections and rinse often and wipe often, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is this semi-finished product. I still have to go around where the old gray stain is and restain that concrete black. And then we are going to fix a few of these boxes. We're gonna pull them back so that you can see the sides of the patio. Um, we don't want to close it in like it was before because then you're gonna miss half the patio. You won't be able to see it as much from the street. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, drop a comment, send this to a friend, and do not forget to subscribe. You're supporting us, you're supporting my son, and you're supporting Chris, the cameraman. So we appreciate you all. Thanks for watching, see you next time.